Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. So in the summertime when I was driving my car, during the cold nights, I noticed that my defroster lines, a few of them were actually broken. So today we're gonna be repairing some of those. I know I only drive my car during the summer and it really isn't necessary, but I would want all my defroster lines to work. So we're gonna go through some steps on how to determine which lines are broken and how to fix them using a $10 kit I purchased from AliExpress. So let's get to work. So the first step is basically to determine which of these lines are actually broken or not working. Um, to do that, we're simply just going to fog up this window um, by using a plastic sheet and a bucket of hot water. All right, so as you can see, it's already starting to fog up in there. So what you want to do is basically put, I guess, a sheet of plastic. Uh, I just let it sit outside so that it blocks it off from this area only and a bucket of hot water. So this will just keep creating, um, I guess, fog and condensation steam inside this area. So you can see that it is really fogging up. And then once it's fogged up enough, you're gonna go inside the car and you're gonna start, like basically run the defogger. And this way you could determine which one of the lines are actually broken. So on an angle, you could see that it is really foggy now. I'm gonna go inside the car and run the defogger in a sec, just to see which lines are gonna be broken. Um, I'm, but with the initial inspection, you could already see that there's a broken line here and maybe a couple broken lines over here. So we kind of expect that these two lines and this line here are gonna be broken. But just to make sure, we're just gonna test it and make sure we figure out which lines are actually broken. All right, so I pushed the defroster on. So now you could actually probably see which lines are going to start defrosting and which ones won't. So let's bring you up close and take a look. All right guys, so now you can see that it's starting to defrost because I turned on the defroster. Um, these are these lines that you can see are the good ones. Here's the not good one, which we've already expected because there's a break there. And then the bottom two, which I've also expected because there's a break in those two areas. So we've determined which lines are actually the ones that are bad. So while we could still visually see this, I'm gonna go ahead and mark them off with some masking tape. That way I know which lines I'm going to be working on. There you go, it's all marked off and you can really see it right now, which lines are working, which aren't. So now we're gonna go ahead and fix it. All right, so first step, we've already determined which lines are already broken. But next, you gotta look across the whole line and determine where the break is. So as you can see right here, you can see that this area is fried. So there's definitely a break here. And on these two, these are fried here as well. As you can see right there, and right there. All right, the next step is basically using a multimeter to test that break to determine if that is exactly where the break is happening. Um, I know online talks about doing an ohm test. This is where you set it to ohms and you kind of touch two points on a wire and it should zero out. If it's zero out, it's good, it's still connected. This won't work on this grid. Here's the reason why. So as you can see, the grid is connected across this channel and this channel and all these lines across. So if there's a break in one, it's still connected from all the other lines, so it would still zero out. So the ohm method or the ohm test would not find the break on this grid. However, we can do a voltage test by turning on the defroster and then testing it. I'll show you guys that method right now. All right, so you want to test, turn it to voltage, basically any of the volt channels, and then you're gonna to touch the points on the grid um, basically ground the ground wire. So anywhere where you can ground it, you ground it. I'm essentially just grounding it right here. Put a piece of tape here so that it will hold this right here, like so. Now that that's grounded, you take this and you touch the two points on the wire. So you touch one point and touch another. So here's what, what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you guys right now. So the brake is right here. So this is the right side of the brake. You touch it once. Here. And then here is the left side of the brake. So on the right side of the brake right now, you can see that it is basically saying 8.27 on my voltmeter. And then on the left side of the brake, it says 0 0.75. I'll show you what the voltmeter says as I touch the two points. As you can see, it's way above around 8. And that is 0 0.7. So 
So based off of that, you know there's a break in it because it would be a consistent um, voltage across the whole line if it wasn't broken. So that is exactly where the break is. And you do that for every single line where you think there is a break. All right, so since we've determined that this area here has um, a break in it, what we're gonna do is basically clean this area up with some isopropyl alcohol. In some of these kits, they do come with like, I guess an alcohol wipe or something like that, but you really wanna clean off any grease or dirtiness uh, with some isopropyl alcohol. So what we're gonna do is just wipe this right down, make sure it's nice and clean. And it's pretty straightforward to just wipe it. Next, once the, I guess, isopropyl alcohol has evaporated, we're gonna mask the line because we're gonna be putting on that copper paste stuff. So I'm gonna get some masking tape and basically mask along this line. Next, we're gonna open up our kit. This should have uh, all the material that we need, basically that copper paste. It should come with a uh, masking tape as well, but I prefer using my own. So it comes in a nice little jar like this, and it comes with some cotton swabs. So we're gonna mix it up and then use the cotton swab to apply it. All right, so we just dip the cotton swab in the compound and we just color it in. And then it comes with this spatula tool and you gotta just scrape it along to spread it as even as possible. And then we remove the masking tape right away. Now we wait for like 15 to 20 minutes for it to actually cure. Um, we could speed that up by using a um, blow dryer or something like that to two to five minutes. So what we're gonna do is use a heat gun. All right, so there's the repair. You could see the copper compound. It's kind of hard to see with the, the lighting and stuff. Uh, see if I could get it to show. There you go. You can see the copper compound a little bit right there. Um, the line is there. So just make sure there's enough coverage. Um, one of the tricks that I used is to clean up these lines. Um, one of the tricks I use to clean up the line is just using a razor blade and just kind of going against the line to make sure that it's straight. So from behind, it still looks the same, but it should work. Um, now we're gonna have to wait for like 24 hours for it to cure, and then we could start the uh, test again using the defroster. So for now, I'm just gonna leave it and then we're gonna come back to it tomorrow. All right, so it's the next day now. It's a little bit under 24 hours. I've wrapped it up with plastic in the back again and then added a bucket of hot water in there. So I'm just waiting for this thing to steam up and then we're gonna test the marked lines to make sure that they're working now. So we're just gonna wait for it to fog up and then we're gonna turn on the defroster. Well, it looks like that did not fix it. All right guys, so after spending days on this, I finally got it to work. Um, the only way that I managed to get it to work was basically masking off a thicker line on this line and applying a real generous coat on here. Um, this stuff is a copper conductive paint, so it does conduct. So after applying that and I tested the defroster, unfortunately I don't have footage of that, um, it finally started to work. But you can see exactly where the repairs are. It looked really ugly and there's globs of paint everywhere. So I didn't like that, so I decided to just wipe it off and live with it not working with these three lines. Because, you know, this is my hobby car, I won't use the defroster that often, um, but if you guys are fixing it for your dailies or anything like that, um, I would recommend this stuff. There's other manufacturers like Permatex that makes it as well that's local. This stuff, obviously, I got off AliExpress, so, you know, I was kind of iffy or weary about it because it is a China product, but it does work. Um, but unfortunately, I don't like the look of it. Anyways, guys, that's basically it for this video. Um, if you haven't already, please comment, like, and subscribe, and share my videos. As always, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.